In this lecture, we're going to again discuss IQ modulation, and in particular the implementation that we saw for QPSK, which is generalizable to QAM. But we're going to see how it is that we can achieve spectrally efficient communications by using QAM modulation. So we're going to look at the spectral aspects of what's going on in our transmitter, and we're going to think about what's going on in the eye branch. So the eye branch, I have one of my data streams going in. I have a carrier, and it's going to modulate onto the cosine. So here is the spectrum of what's coming out after that modulation. There's the same center frequency, which refers to the carrier, and then a cosine modulation, and depending on the speed of the modulation, there's a certain bandwidth which is occupied. If it's a uh, square pulse that's being transmitted, I have this nice sync function in the frequency domain. So something from your um, signals and systems class, very classic. So I have one data stream, the I branch, and now let's think about what's going on in the Q branch. Well, in the Q branch, something very similar is happening. <laughs> <clears throat> Here I also have a carrier, same center frequency, and of course now I'm just getting multiplied by sinusoid, but sinusoid cosine from our Fourier analysis, we know that it's just the same spectrum in terms of amplitude uh, or power spectral density, exactly the same. So that means that at this point, what happens is I'm going to combine these two outputs from the in-phase and the quadrature branches. I'm going to combine them into one. Remember, they're centered on the same frequency because they're using the same carrier. So when I combine them, of course they're superimposed. They're right on top of one another. I'm sending them through the same spectrum, the same width of spectrum. So if before I sent only yellow or I sent only red, that would have this amount of information sent in this bandwidth. But now, of course, I'm sending both simultaneously. And that means it's very spectrally efficient that I am putting information in both at the same time. Of course, the power spectral density, if I looked at the density at the output of this transmitter, the power spectral density would be, you know, the sum, so it would actually be this white curve. But this white curve is the result of these two, two superimposed uh, power spectral densities. So given that this is what's happening at the transmitter, how is it that at the receiver I can keep things straight? How is it that I can get the red, take this white curve, <laughs> power spectral density, and recover this yellow and the red and separate them, even though they're, you know, on top of each other in the frequency domain? So we've seen how a coherent transmitter manipulates the spectrum in order to transmit QPSK or QAM data, and now we'll look at the coherent receiver, what it's doing what its spectral behavior is. How do we get the IQ modulation back from the coherent receiver? So what happens at the receiver? The coherent receiver is going to do something very similar to what happened at the transmitter. So we look at what's going on in the transmitter architecture, and when we get to the uh, receiver, I'm going to do something very similar. I'm going to take this total spectrum in white here, I'm going to put it into a receiver with two branches. I'm going to have an in-phase branch and a quadrature branch. So when this total white spectrum comes through and it hits the cosine, well, remember, the cosine and sine are orthogonal. So that when the red components of this frequency content hits that cosine, it's going to be zeroed out. And what comes through is going to be only the yellow part, only the spectrum, coming from the data which was encoded in the I branch of my transmitter. And of course, the same thing happens in the quadrature branch. When the white total spectrum is sent through the quadrature branch, the sine is orthogonal to the cosine, so the uh, yellow portion of the spectrum is going to be rejected. When, we, when it hits the sine, it's going to be zeroed out, and what's going to be left is purely the red or the uh, quadrature information. So at my spectrum, this utilization of cosine and sine at both the transmitter and the receiver is what permits me to have this independent ordered pair, which I can easily separate even though when they're transmitted, they're transmitted together on the same spectrum. 
So two channels occupying the same spectrum. That means that I get twice the spectral efficiency. And because I'm using two channels, that means that I am doubling my bit rate. So remember, I said that even though I have a speed limit from my electronics, I cannot modulate my signal more than the speed my electronics can achieve. This allows me to make my bit rate, to make that twice as high as the rate that my, my switching can occur in the electronics. So again, this is just another way of interpreting how you get higher spectral efficiency using coherent detection.